Is NHL 17 the worst game in the franchise series? A lot of people seem to think so. You don't have to look very far if you go on to their Facebook page. First comment talks about how EA is greedy for making these collectible sets so terrible and so hard to get. Yet this year the hero sets are very easy to make and you get rewarded pretty well for him. The next person talks about how it's impossible to get good players that are rare in the pack. When this year the only rares that you get in packs are players. There's a reason why all the base cards are so cheap right now. Further down, someone talks about how the customization in this game makes the game take a few steps backwards in the series. They tweak the in-game mechanics ever so slightly to make it more balanced every year. But all these extra customization features make the game less vanilla, less basic, more enjoyable, more personal. I hope everyone should know by now that Angel 15 was the worst game in the series, just because they stripped you of all of those different features in game modes, and you were just left with the basic vanilla game, and even then it was kind of broken. Here people are quitting the game because they're getting bored of it, but that doesn't make the game bad, because you can play the crap out of any game and get bored of it. There are very few games where you can spend forever on them and not get bored. Finally, this last guy here is complaining about all the different mechanics in the game, starting with passing, and we already went over how to fix your passes, he just doesn't know about it. The second part is physics, and that's kind of understandable. But at the same time, this is one of the few games where there's a lot of people colliding at the same time, so it's not easy to make the physics like that. But regardless, this year they added new puck collision mechanics, so that the pucks won't go through sticks or players or skates and whatnot, so that's already a step forward. He talks about how the hitting is unrealistic, and well, I kind of love the hitting in these NHL games, they're so fun to watch. But I wouldn't say they're unrealistic, they just don't happen very often. Because in the game, we as players play a lot more aggressively than people in the real NHL who are professionals at the game and know how to keep their heads up the whole time. And he talks about how in the last 30 seconds of the game, you'll score more often than normal, yeah, because the time has slowed down. And he summarizes it all with, uh, with just lines rather than paragraphs. Unfortunately, the guys who run the Facebook page aren't as savage as the Twitter guys, or at least I haven't seen as much of those posts that are like, maybe you just suck from them on Facebook compared to Twitter, because they do that a lot on Twitter, and it's hilarious. So this year, compared to last year, we see a lot of welcome changes. And my guess is a lot of it comes from the EA Game Changers, which are a bunch of YouTubers and streamers that EA kind of got together so that so that they can collectively gather opinions on the game, new features, changes that they would like to see, and bug fixes. Pretty much EA is finally listening to us. Because in the past, they had a terrible PR where they just did whatever they wanted. One of the big changes with regards to EA Sports Hockey League is when you're playing club matches with goalies, one of the goalies would quit and make it that much harder for that team to be scored on with a computer goalie. Something like that takes the fun out of the game because it's no longer like a 6v6, it's a 6v5 with a computer goalie. So this year they made it so that team gets an automatic loss if the goalie ends up quitting. Another cool feature that's been added that we don't see much use yet is the competitive rating. Where it will match you up against players with similar ratings in EA Sports Hockey League, just like you have it now with Hut and Versus. They also made more dynamic goalies, both player goalies and computer goalies where they certainly look more realistic when they are making the saves. With player goalies, you have a lot more control as to how you want to make the save as well. One of my favorite features in NHL 17 and 16 is the visual on-ice trainer. In 16, it was very basic, but this year they made it more complex so that it can help you in the areas that you're struggling in. Not a lot of people know about it because they have it turned off. I don't have it turned off, but it's not like... I need it, it's just I'm kind of interested in seeing what it would say. And sometimes I'm kind of doing my own thing anyway, so it's, it's funny when it calls me out on it. And occasionally maybe I am doing the wrong thing, it, it's nice that it tells me what I should be doing instead. So a lot of the experienced players might not see a use for it, but it certainly helps a lot of the beginners who are new to this series. Finally, you guys do have to remember that they have a small development team and probably not as big of a budget as other sports games to make everything that they want in the NHL games. Another cool thing coming out of EA Sports Hockey League this year is arena customization. This makes every away club game personal because it's pretty cool to see what 
designs people have come out with to decorate their arena. And yeah, I was going crazy on the purple. Fight me. I was having fun. Unfortunately, a lot of stuff that you see, you need to be a high club level for. But it gives you a purpose to play more games to unlock a bunch of different arena designs and look different from everybody else. This is a crazy amount of customization, and I wouldn't be surprised if this was a few years in the making, like they started doing this in like NHL 14, to make sure that they had something pretty good and presentable. Though unfortunately this wasn't tested well enough, because when it comes to props, in certain camera angles, the props will block your screen almost entirely, or just half of the screen and you can't really see what's going on on the face off. That is something that they do need to fix in any current edition of the game. Game breaking bugs such as this one. Like sure you can have a different camera, but, but I like my classic camera. I don't want anyone to mess with that. But there are other bugs like this one, such as people not even being able to play any Hockey Ultimate Team games. There are people that bought the game just for HUT and a month into the game, they're not even able to play any game or make their team. That is something the dev team has got to be on top of within the first week. Maybe some bugs might be a little bit hard to find or fix. That's fine, but at least let us know that you're working on it. Because half the time, we certainly feel like you're already working on the next game of the series, which is probably true. These coins are also very fun. It seems like I'm like interrupting myself because I'm playing them while I'm talking, but it's just... I certainly enjoy the uh, different points that you can have. It's going well. So other than the horns, you can have a bunch of other special effects and music playing when you score a goal or when you get a power play or when you win a game. It's a bunch of cool stuff. But another bug that the dev team needs to be on top of is the EASHL drop-in bug where, like, I don't know, like a quarter of the time, the game doesn't even start up. You waste two minutes getting a team together and choosing your positions and the team and everything, only for the game to tell you that you lost connection and you have to try starting up again. So that might be a reason why there aren't that many people playing drop-in games as there were in the past iterations of the game. Another cool thing this year is the celebrations. There are so many different things that you can do when you score a goal, it's ridiculous. A lot of the stuff that you kind of wish you would see the real NHL players doing when they score a goal. Maybe you have to give them the idea by showing them all the different celebrations in this game. So the customization is, is pretty much endless. I mean, maybe there is an end to it. But you'll certainly spend a lot of time on something like this and playing against other players in like drop-in games or club games is just fun to watch these celebrations because you rarely see them everyone kind of has their own personality and, and chooses their own celebration it's not like you see the same celebration over and over again unless people don't press the y button or the triangle button at all so from ea sports hockey league we move on to hockey ultimate team and this part's kind of tricky because they made a lot of changes changes that maybe people didn't want to see but at the same time i feel like it's a fresh new experience where there's something different going on this year but i like it because it's something new something different and much like the gameplay mechanics you tweak it every year just to make sure that it's pretty good this year we have sets that lead to getting special cards instead of just a random amount of packs we have draft champions which while it hasn't really been updated it's still a different way to play the game I kind of wish Draft Champions was updated a little more, but maybe they just made it so that it's not as easy to update. Maybe next year it'll catch up to where Draft Champions is in the other sports games that EA makes. This year they also removed Chemistry in favor of Synergy, and Chemistry was always very weird because you never really knew if it helped your team or how much it affected your team. But it also provides you a really cool way to build your team. You have to think a little bit more and plan a little bit harder to make a team that you want based around these synergies. It might take your your pretty shitty team and make them pretty amazing if you have multiple synergies, but at the same time, if you have a high-end team with a lot of these synergies, well, you kind of have the god squad right there. 
Though I feel like it might not even affect the high-end teams as much because the synergies may not allow your stats to go over 99. Regardless, it's still a pretty cool addition to the game. Going back into sets, with the trading post, EA allows you to take all those different consumables and cards that you don't like, you don't ever use, you can't be bothered to sell, you might quick sell, and you're finally able to kind of turn them into something useful, such as gold collectibles and carbon collectibles. And then with heroes, these are the strongest cards, and they're pretty easy to make, or you can just buy them for a really cheap price on the marketplace. You probably may not get those cards just by playing the game, but if you play the auction house, you can certainly get enough pucks to get them. Another thing people complained about in Hockey Ultimate Team is how it's so hard to get good players from packs. Like we went over with a Facebook post someone wrote. But they made it so that all the rare cards in a pack, they're only going to be players. Compared to last year, we got useless like gold rare uh, consumables. So it's easier than ever to pull good players. Ooh, look at Nanze Kopitar. It's actually my best pull this year and happens to be in a video that I'm making just for the purpose of showing you guys that NHL 17 isn't the worst game in the series. So thank you EA Gods for uh, giving me this. It completely changed the outcome of this video because I was just going to trash on you guys the whole time. And once you, I pulled the Kopitar, I'm like, oh, I love you guys. I'm nah, just kidding, that's not how it actually happened. Finally going into the single player modes, be a pro is kind of stale compared to last year okay i'll give you that but franchise mode which i didn't even touch yet so you guys get to see the the whole intro again i know isn't that great is an upgrade over last year's be a gm mode because you guys get to be team owners now and have a lot more power a lot more customization than ever before so ea has brought up a ton of new features in this game i think the whole world cup of hockey thing while it's something new, something kind of exciting-ish, I mean, that's that wasn't going to last too long, so they weren't thinking too far ahead on that one. But that's okay, because it's not like anyone cared about it enough to begin with, so it's just, oh, hey, look, we get to do something else if you want. So with all of this, I think that NHL 17 is one of the better games that EA Sports have come out with. The problem is, after the launch... We as players discovered a bunch of different bugs and issues with the game and they're kind of slow on fixing it. So something like stick lifts not working properly, you know, it, it took them like a month to fix that. And that's kind of disappointing because all of a sudden you're dealing with new mechanics in the game. But you guys do have to remember that when you tweak or tune something with regards to the mechanics, you guys are bound to get something else that's broken because of it. It's like when they try to stop you from doing a particular glitch goal by making the goalie more aggressive on one side, well then all of a sudden another quote unquote glitch goal shows up on the opposite side of the goalie. But I don't believe in glitch goals as you guys know, it, they're called high percentage shots. And I might talk more about them in another video. I think with all of these additions, this version of NHL is a must-have upgrade. As in, if you haven't played a newer version of NHL for a while because you're still stuck on like the old generation versions of NHL, this is definitely the one that that you can get back into. Like last year with NHL 16, that should have been the first game that came out on the new consoles. And this year, it's a huge upgrade over that year. With all that said, there's still a lot of work that they do have to do to improve the franchise, but I'm satisfied with the progress that they made in NHL 17. And it certainly feels kind of like a sandbox game to, to me, where you're able to kind of just do whatever you want to do. And it is made with all the different types of players in mind, so that anyone can enjoy it, as long as you guys don't overdo it, like I mentioned before. And remember guys, without this series, we wouldn't have an NHL game at all that is constantly being updated. We would be stuck in the past and have nostalgia just do the work for us in trying to get us excited for what we're playing. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed 
this week's episode of Let's Talk Angel 17. Let me know what you guys think or what you guys thought prior to watching the video and what you guys think now. Hopefully I have cleansed the non-believers, but if not, then that's okay too. Maybe it's just because you don't play with me on a daily basis so you can't have as much fun as I do. With that, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in another video, hopefully.